Good morning, Vasa. I wasn't planning even on remotely doing this video, but I got um, kind of sucked into it. Um, and this is about Oklahoma police officer Daniel Holtzclaw. And what I'm not telling you to do is listen to me and say and, and do what I do or think what I think. Um, but I want you hopefully to take maybe an hour, look into this, and if you feel like I do, maybe share it. Um, maybe sign the petition, and maybe um, spread this word about. Um, I was first, I saw an article about, um, by a lady named Diane Davison, who is um, Feminism LOL on YouTube just a random thing popped up on my YouTube channel, you know, which for once you got it right, YouTube. Um, hold on one second, I'm going to blow my nose. And we're back. So yeah, good job, YouTube. Um, now, I'm going to preface this with some things. I support police officers. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to go into it. I'm 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 pro police officer. With that said, however, I'm not ignorant to the fact that there's bad cops, horrible cops. That sometimes cops get it wrong. That sometimes um, it could be done on purpose or um, by accident. Um, I'd be a fool to say otherwise. Um, being a fan of police officers, um, I really really like seeing police officers being held accountable when they take advantage of their position. What I don't like seeing whether, and this is across the board, so um, I'm against Black Lives Matter. What I don't like seeing is some person in Black Lives Matter beat up or thrown in jail, rightfully or wrongfully so, just because they were part of Black Lives Matter. I don't like seeing liberals get punched in the face just because they're liberals or don't agree with me. Um, I don't like to see people falsely accused of anything. I'm an advocate for justice. When a and this uh, when a cop is held accountable and is um, taken, you know, like I said, held held accountable for the actions and held responsible, I love it. Um, but I don't think we need to do a bloodletting every once in a while and throw some cop in jail, um, throw a black person in jail, throw a politician in jail, just you know, to to sate our bloodlust, our desire for justice so we gotta just kinda throw one to, you know throw the lamb to the wolves so to speak when I was in the Marine Corps a small example of this is well in general I didn't mind Marines being held accountable but um drinking and driving was always a big one and I used to tell my Marines I was like if you guys are out in town and you're drinking and you gotta get back I don't care if it's one in the morning two in the morning four in the morning or a half hour before formation call me and I'll come get you and I'll be pissed at you but I'll do it but if you get behind the wheel while you're intoxicated I'll be the first one to tell the CO anyone responsible and the first sergeant sergeant major anyone throw the book at them give them everything everything you can do help hold them accountable for it because he had the tools and the knowledge necessary to avoid that situation and instead opted to make a bad decision so, what I'm getting at is, whether you're a cop, whether you're a liberal, whether you're a Marine, whether you're um, a Black Lives Matter advocate, whether you're um, pro-abort, I don't care, whatever, it doesn't matter. I Justice is justice. Um, and I don't like to see innocent people um, falsely convicted, and I especially don't like to see it um, because of a... Uh, moral thing or social justice okay um, now I'm gonna go through I'm gonna just be very very short very brief in this because I want you guys to check this out but this guy was arrested a police officer um, on charges of various forms of sexual assault now to me what's important is initially when arrested he didn't want a lawyer said I'm good I don't have anything to fear um so take my DNA take my clothes whatever you need he uh from um 
said to um, take my DNA to I'll do a polygraph test, lie detector test, anything. What you know? What do you want? And he's like, I don't have any reason to be upset. Um, cooperative. Nothing changed with his story through the entire thing. Um, and what snowballs from there is upon the first accusation of a white police officer and a black criminal, black li this was around the summer of um, the whole Ferguson thing where racial tensions were amazingly high. So there was a lot of pressure on the... Um, the prosecutor, the police, the detectives investigating this, not to find justice, not to, the, the, the pressure wasn't to find the truth, the pressure was to convict this guy to avoid a riot. And just, just think about that. And when I say that, um, in the couple links that I'll show you, you can hear it in the things they say, you can put it together based on the timing of it, and I'll quote some other things and post them that just indicate even more what was going on outside of it. Um, now, there were initially, I want to say 20, maybe 19 people who came forth and said, um, oh, he's he raped me, or so sexually assaulted me in some degree or another. Seven got dismissed right away because they were blatant lies. Um, and then I want to say of the 13, another seven, six or seven, he was found not guilty of and he was only found guilty of the other six or seven on separate accounts and, and what's interesting is um, several of the witnesses some even that he was found guilty of I know um, at least two uh, I don't remember the exact contradicting statements or exo exonerating statements but again that's why I implore you to go and look um, some of the people, this is a six foot two, very well built, like um, physically fit, half Asian, half Amer half white. And one, dis and with uh, very dark hair, I wouldn't say black, darker than mine though, but very, very dark, close to black. So one, des one describes him as a black man. One describe, or I'm sorry, one describes him as a black man, another describes him as a black man, shorter than she is, and she was 5'11". So again, he's six foot two, she's five eleven. She described a black man that was shorter than she is. Excuse me. Another one says a thick, which to me would be more like, sorry, my body. You know, I got a little bit of a belly going on. Okay, I got a little bit of, of this. Not, you know, the, 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 I don't remember the term she used, but you know, it, it it to me made it seem like they were talking about a fat dude. Okay, um, and if if you see this dude. Fat's not the word that comes to mind. Um, another one described him as blonde. Um, and the other, one other one, several of them are known um, drug addicts, drug users, and prostitutes. People who um, are not reliable. Some of their statements, a lot of them, a big chunk of them go through and they change what they say. Um, and again, if you watch the, test, uh, um, the uh, interviews by the two detectives, the vast majority of them, they spoon feed them what they're supposed to say. A lot of them say, there's one other one of the ladies, I was, she says she was never convicted, or another, never uh, sexually assaulted, until he goes on to say, well, this guy did all these things, and he did this, and this, this, did this, this, and this, and, and essentially spoon feeding her like, hey, even if you weren't sexually assaulted, this guy did some bad things. So are you sure you weren't sexually assaulted? That would put this guy, bad, bad guy in jail? Oh, yeah, and you know, now that I think about that, I, I forgot I was sexually assaulted. Um, another one, at the end of her interview, doesn't know the camera's off and basically insinuates heavily, I wasn't raped, but um, even if it wasn't, at least I know this bad guy, th that my testimony is going to put this person that you're telling me is bad, get him put away. Um... So there's that aspect of it. Um, now, if you are in a person who is against um, social justice like I am, a person against Black Lives Matter, this is very important because essentially um, public sentiment is what pushed a lot of this. They spurred it. They, they, again, the intention wasn't to, fi to find justice, to expose the truth. The purpose was to sate the hunger of the masses, which was we need to convict this guy or we're going to riot.
In fact, there's interviews in several of them where the lady says a lady responsible for the Black Lives Matter protests and movement are all around the trial saying I couldn't guarantee what would happen. It would probably riot. And at um, that point, like I said, riots had happened several places in throughout the U.S. Um, and I think this guy, I don't... I, I think he's innocent of, of almost all of it, and I'll get, elaborate more when I say almost all because I'll I'll say now one thing they were talking about is that they found no none of this guy's DNA on any of the witnesses that were raped by him. Some immediately went to the thing, you know, the um, to the doctor and found no DNA. They did find one, and this is where I'm going to say kind of where innocent of almost everything. Now they say. They, they did find one subject's DNA on the crotch of his pants. And um, to a lot of the jurors, that was part of the, the what they needed to convince themselves that, yes, something happened. Um, now, in one of the interviews, I'll, or the, the ex documentary I'll post by Michelle Malkin, she talks about there was a, one of the suspects who... Um, texted her mom or someone essentially saying something like this hot hot cop wants to hook up blah 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 now so i look at it one of two ways in that regard he might have been banging that chick okay is that illegal no cops can bang people um but i th i know at the time it said she that he had a girlfriend so i think it was kind of like um something he was trying to hide um which could be why the dna was there but also this is the most important thing okay if my wife right now, or I'm sorry, my ex-wife, um, got mad at me for something I said or whatever, and she's like, um, as Seth is sexually assaulting my kids, you know what's going to happen? My DNA is all over my girls, all over my girls' underwear. Um, their DNA is probably all over my clothes, um, probably all over my face right now. And this is going to sound crude, and, but I'm going to say it. My, their DNA is probably on my crotch because I gave them a hug and a kiss this morning, um... I help them put their jackets on, I rub their hair, love you, goodbye, and, or you don't know, pinch their cheeks, and then at some point I may rub my junk, my junk, my, I may go pee, at which point maybe the time that I did that I didn't wash my hands, or maybe I did even, because, you know, that's the interesting thing, like, uh, I was thinking about the fact that um, the whole Clinton and Monica Lewinsky thing, like, she had that thing dry cleaned, and his DNA was still on it, okay, so even if I wash my hands, my girl's DNA may transfer anywhere in my body. You know what else might happen? Um, I may go push my roommate or um, touch a cup, and he may touch that cup and then go pee himself. So his DNA is all over there. So now, you know, could that be taken um, as evidence that basically everybody in my house <laughs> is raping my daughters? Yeah, if you want to look at it like that. And that's the interesting thing about DNA, and they specifically talk about it in Michelle Malkin's um, interview, is that DNA does not show is not evidence of a crime. It's just an evidence of a transfer of DNA. Um, and those are things to think about. You know, um, the other thing is that the guy had they found an unknown male's DNA on his crotch. Also, does that mean he raped some dude? Yeah, according you know according to the logic, if there's DNA on your crotch of your pants, then you raped that person. So, but the answer is no. It's not evidence of something. Um, now, so let's, I, I have all that out there. Um, the last thing I want to point out is the problem with social justice movements, liberals, and this whole, we need to burn cops at the stake uh, no matter what. Um, the gentleman who was responsible or involved in the process, the prosecution was, um, I don't remember his first name, but it's Crump, and he, he was the same person associated with um, Trayvon Martin and um, Michael Brown, the, the civil suits, um, and I was involved with these people, because basically now the, pe the 13 people who went forward, even though half of them were dismissed as not guilty, are suing the state of Oklahoma. Or the city of Oklahoma City. I'm not sure how that works. So, if you're not a fan of if of justice, or I should say, if you're um, if you loathe injustice, you should already be appalled at this. 
Um, furthermore, if you live in Oklahoma and Oklahoma City, you should be even more appalled because now on top of an innocent person potentially being convicted, you're gonna, your tax money is going to go and pay these people who falsely accuse this cop. Um, the, I don't like to use the term often, but this is one of like a, a witch hunt. Um, the, the two leading detectives both said that they immediately assumed he was guilty, which to me shows a bias because now you're again, you're not looking for objective truth. You're looking for the evidence to confirm that your truth is the truth, to validate it. Um, in doing so, they didn't find people looking, um, for example, saying, Sex a cop sexually assaulted me. What they did at that point was went through his, um, and I, I, I'm going to use a lack of a better term because I don't know the exact term, but they used his notes, the, his uh, police files. So when he had an interaction, if he pulled someone over, arrested someone, questioned someone, cite, gave a citation, so they looked through it. Okay, um, these people are black which is again adds to the tension because now they have 13 black people saying a white guy did this they didn't pick any white hispanic ladies japanese ladies anybody that was not black they didn't pick anyone who did not have a history a, a police history you know, whether it was prostitution and or drug use or violence or was a current drug user at the time so they went through and cherry picked these people and then you can see from the interviews spoon fed them, spoon -fed them information um gps negates a lot of the um, accusations that they made but the problem what they did was they the even and the even the jury says they cherry-picked well yeah he didn't you know the, the stuff he that negates it doesn't matter because they did say he arrested him he, they did go down this route and there was DNA from another lady over there so yeah he obviously had to have raped her um, it's disgusting and this guy got a total of 260 something years in jail um, for this um, and I can't believe that. Like, you know, at first, at first I wasn't sure. At first I was just skeptical. And now in reading it, I'm like, at the very least, this guy needs a retrial because I just, you sitting back and looking at some common sense, I just, I, you know, if you have a police officer on one hand who prior to then has not been convicted of anything, um, he had, um, Char not charges, but like um, people who had arrested him had filed charges against him, maybe for um, excessive force or whatever, but he was always exonerated. And the fact of the matter is, in high crime areas, that's part and parcel of what you're going to do because they're going to want to take revenge on you, try to ruin your career, try and find some way to get out of it. And um, it's not uncommon in that area. They say all the time, um, every couple of days, there's a charge put up on a police officer there and almost all the vast majority of them are just not dismissed as in like pff, whatever they're investigated and summarily, uh, sum, summarily dismissed no that's wrong there's no evidence of it or the evidence that we have contradicts it like you know I always slam my face on the hood oh well here's the the cam footage that shows that you didn't have any marks or whatever a witness said no you didn't get your face you know whatever the point is um and I don't know. They 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 botched this thing. Now the last part I'm going to go on about um, talking specifically about. I, I got derailed on my train of thought there. Um, the the gentleman Crump said um, not to be confused with Trump because that would be triggering. Um, he he su he summarized this perfectly um, because he said. Let me find the quote. Mm -hmm. He said that this Holt, the gentleman Daniel Holt's clause conviction was, quote, a statement for 400 years of racism, oppression, and sexual assault on black women, end quote. So not, he's not saying the guy is guilty. He doesn't even, it, what he's saying is, I don't care if he's guilty. I physically don't care. What I care about is getting retribution and revenge, and um, that's disgusting. Um, 
I implore you um, to look at some links. I'm not going to link too much. I'm going to link probably one article and one, um, and then the, the, and the Michelle Malkin thing to watch. It's long. It's about an hour, but again, I think it's well worth it because they lay out so much information. Now, I'll actually post a second one by um, Feminism LOL, Diana Davison. Well worth watching. It's a lot shorter. Um, and a lot more uh, comedic. So um, this just went over 20 minutes, so I'm going to go. I may do one more video right after this and then go about my day. Uh, I have a busy week. My well, I'll get into that later. But um, I hope this reaches you all, and I, I hope you give me some feedback, and I hope you share this and, and look into this. It's, it's important. Uh, go easy, gang. Take care. Have a good day.